Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. Nice to see all of you here today, and, and welcome to those of you who are worshiping with us online. We're glad that you're here too. Uh, today marks the second Sunday of the, the season of end time, a Sunday known as Last Judgment. Uh, Jesus Christ will come back one day. We don't know when, but he will come back and he will judge uh, the world. Until that time, though, we prepare ourselves for that last day of judgment. And the way we as servants of the word prepare ourselves is by feeding our faith with God's means of grace, with the word and sacraments. That will be the focus of our worship service here today. Our service is printed out for you in the service folder, and we'll begin with our opening hymn, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. But before we do that, take a moment to greet those that are going to be worshiping around you today. God bless our worship. <laughs> The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For all that we need in life, and for the wisdom to use all your gifts with gratitude and joy, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For steadfast assurance that nothing can separate us from your love, and for the courage to stand firm against the assaults of Satan and every evil, hear our prayer, O Christ. Christ mercy. For the well-being of your holy church in all the world, and for those who offer here their worship and praise, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Merciful God, maker and preserver of life, uphold us by your power and keep us in your tender care. Amen. The works of the Lord are great and glorious. His name is worthy of praise. Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Lord has instructed his servants to proclaim his word until he comes again on that last day of judgment. God says this because it's the word and only the word that is going to cause repentance, that's going to cause faith, that's going to cause encouragement for the Christian. We hear that from Jeremiah chapter 26, verse 1. Early in the reign of Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, king of Judah, this word came from the Lord. This is what the Lord says. Stand in the courtyard of the Lord's house and speak to all the people of the towns of Judah who come to worship in the house of the Lord. Tell them everything I command you. Do not omit a word. Perhaps they will listen and each will turn from their evil ways. Then I will relent and not inflict on them the disaster I was planning because of the evil they have done. Say to them, this is what the Lord says. 
If you do not listen to me and follow my law, which I have set before you, and if you do not listen to the words of my servants, the prophets, whom I have sent to you again and again, though you have not listened, then I will make this house like Shiloh and this city a curse among all the nations of the earth. This is God's word. Our psalm for the day is Psalm 14. Uh, the pianist will in, in, in introduce the refrain and we'll all sing that first refrain together and then we'll be speaking the verses of that psalm responsibly. They have together become corrupt. There, there is, is no one who does good, not even one. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Restore your people and bless them. Evildoers never learn. Those who devour my people and do not call on the Lord. You evildoers frustrate the plans of the poor, but the Lord is their refuge. Oh, that salvation for Israel would come out of Zion. When the Lord restores the fortunes of his people, let Israel rejoice and be glad. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. of preaching the word, of being servants of the word, we are going to be met with hostility, with hate, with resentment. But God promises us vindication on that last day of judgment. He promises vindication for those who are faithful servants of the word. A lesson from 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. All this is evidence that God's judgment is right and as a result, you will be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you are suffering. God is just. He will pay back trouble to those who trouble you and give relief to you who are troubled and to us as well. This will happen when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven in blazing fire with his powerful angels. He will punish those who do not know God and do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. They will be punished with everlasting destruction and shut out from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might on the day he comes to be glorified in his holy people and to be marveled at among all those who have believed. This includes you because you believed our testimony to you. This is the word of our God. We join in singing the verse of the day. In preparation 
to the coming of our risen King. Please stand for his word in the gospel. Our gospel for this Sunday, the second Sunday of end times, is taken from Luke chapter 19, beginning with the 11th verse. This will serve as the basis for our sermon later on. While they were listening to this, he, Jesus, went on to tell them a parable because he was near Jerusalem and the people thought that the kingdom of God was going to appear at once. He said, A man of noble birth went to a distant country to have himself appointed king and then to return. So he called ten of his servants and gave them ten minas. Put this money to work, he said, until I come back. But his subjects hated him and sent a delegation after him to say, We don't want this man to be our king was made king, however, and returned home. Then he sent for the servants to whom he had given the money in order to find out what they had gained with it. The first one came and said, Sir, your mina has earned ten more. Well done, my good servant, his master replied. Because you have been trustworthy in a very small matter, take charge of ten cities. The second came and said, Sir, your mina has earned five more. His master answered, You, take charge of five cities. Then another servant came and said, Sir, here is your mina. I have kept it laid away in a piece of cloth. I was afraid of you because you are a hard man. You take out what you did not put in and reap what you did not sow. His master replied, I will judge you by your own words, you wicked servant. You knew, did you, that I am a hard man, taking out what I did not put in and reaping what I did not sow? Why then didn't you put my money on deposit so that when I came back I could have collected it with interest? Then he said to those standing by, Take his mina away from him and give it to the one who has ten minas. Sir, they said, he already has ten. He replied, I tell you that to everyone who has, more will be given. But as for the one who has nothing, even what they have will be taken away. But those enemies of mine who did not want me to be king over them, bring them here and kill them in front of me. This is the gospel of our king. Praise be to you, O Christ. You may be seated and the children are invited to come forward for the children's message. How are you guys? Good. Good. Did you guys all have fun trick or treating? Did you get tons and tons of candy? Yes. Yeah. I. What if your mom or dad said this to you? You can't watch any cartoons until you eat all your candy. No. Would that make sense? No. no. You would get sick if you ate all your candy. Okay. Yeah. And you have a tummy ache. Yeah, then you have a tummy ache. Yeah, if they said, here, you eat all your candy and you get to watch TV, that doesn't, does that make sense? No. 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 What God does for us is something, something very special. God gives us forgiveness of our sins. How, who, who died for our sins? God. God? Be more specific, be more clear. Who Jesus. died on the cross? God. Jesus. Jesus did. Yeah, Jesus died on the cross, and by Jesus taking our place, he, he took the punishment that our sins deserved. How do you know about that, though? What do we, what do we read? Eh? The Bible. Yeah, we read the Bible, and God gives us He gives us holy communion. God gives us holy baptism. God says, "Here, here." It's not like a hard thing for would that be if your parents said to you, you gotta eat all your candy and then you get to go watch TV, would that be a hard thing for you to do? Yes. No. No. Alright, I'll eat all my candy and then I'll go watch TV. That sounds good. God says, I'm giving you eternal life, and, and here's how I want you to feed your faith with my word and with my sacraments, with baptism, with holy communion. That's what grows and encourages that faith. That's what we study. That's what we came here to celebrate today. Those wonderful gifts, God's means of grace. We've talked about that before. Can you say that with me? 
God's means of grace. Very good. So let's hold our hands and let's thank God for giving us those wonderful blessings, okay? Dear God, thank you so much for your wonderful means of grace. Uh, thank you for the, the one, those wonderful gifts which, which create faith, which strengthen faith, and which encourage my faith. Help me to make use of them all the days of my life until you call me to be at home with you in heaven forever. Thank you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, we pray. Amen. Okay, you guys can go sit back down now, or you can go back to Kids Church, and we'll continue with our hymn of the day. abundance through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The words for our consideration this morning are taken from Luke chapter 19 beginning with the 11th verse. Please bow your heads for prayer. Heavenly Father, sanctify us by the truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. You know, if you do some digging brothers and sisters in Christ, you can find a whole lot of ideas, people speculating about what the last day is going to be like. Can't you? People want to know, well, what are we going to see? What are we going to hear? Will my glorified body mean that I have that six-pack that I've always dreamed of? What's it going to be like? And, and Scripture gives us some of those details, but it gives us an overwhelming more of information on what we as Christians, as servants of the word, are to do in preparation for that last day. In our lesson, we find ourselves walking along the road from Jericho to Jerusalem with Jesus and in a big crowd. And people were asking questions about those last days, but Jesus wanted to stress to them the importance of the job he had for them to do. The job he has for us to do. 
And here it is. To work with his word. That's what we are to do. In order to illustrate that point, Jesus goes through one of those parables, one of those, those, those short stories to try and, and get his point across. And we're going we're gonna to dive into that here this morning. He says this, A man of noble birth went to a distant country to have himself appointed king and then to return. So he called ten of his servants and gave them ten minas. Put this money to work, he said, until I come back. Uh, the man of noble birth is Jesus. Jesus is our, our king of glory. He, he is our, our conquering king over sin and death. And he has ascended into heaven from where he rules over all of his creation. The king in Jesus' story, he called his servants in and he gave them each one mina, which is about three months' wages, and said, here, put this money to work until I come back. This was their job. This was their task. These servants hadn't done anything to earn that mina. This was a, a gift of their king, something that he wanted them to, that he graciously invited them to do. Our God has given us our mina too. Only our mina isn't money, it's his word and sacrament. His, it's those means of grace. He says, here, put those to work. Uh, on the night Jesus was betrayed, on Monday Thursday, he, he had that intimate meal with his disciples where he instituted Holy Communion, said, here, take, eat. This is my body. This is my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. Do this for the forgiveness of your sins. Celebrate this special meal and proclaim my death until I come back. Just before he ascended into heaven, Jesus gave that great commission where he said, Go and make disciples of all nations by baptizing with the waters of holy baptism, by teaching and instructing with the word. God's means of grace. Those are our minas, and our orders are to put those minas to work. But in Jesus' story, we're told that, that, that some of them, some of the people, some of his subjects hated him and sent a delegation after him to say, we don't want this man to be our king. Does that sound awfully familiar to Jesus' ministry? Was he accepted everywhere he went? Or was he denied? Was he rejected? Listen to what the prophet Isaiah said about Jesus. He was despised and rejected by men. Like one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. He was oppressed and afflicted. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. Sounds an awful lot like Jesus to me. We're told, though, that this nobleman was made king anyway, right? It didn't matter if the people didn't want him as their king. They didn't have a say in the matter. The same is true of Christ, the king. It doesn't matter if people believe that Jesus is the Son of God. He still is the Son of God, whether they believe it or not. It's like the teenage girl who shrieks in horror amongst her friends and says, Those are not my parents. <laughs> They're still your parents, though, aren't they? No matter how embarrassing or goofy they might be, you're still related to them. You can't get away from that. Jesus still is the Son of God, whether or not people believe it or not. He is, as Paul said, exalted by God to the highest place. And God gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus is our King and continues to rule and reign over his creation until the time when he comes back, which this King did in Jesus' story. And when he did, he sent for the servants to whom he had given the money in order to find out what they had gained with it. We don't know when that's going to be. We don't know when Christ is going to come back, but we know that he will. It might be today, it might be tomorrow, it might be 2,000 years, but Christ will come back, and when he does, he'll call us all before him. Now, those, those first two servants, they came joyously to report what had happened with the, 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 the job that they were commissioned to do. Sir, your mina has earned ten more, the first one said. 
Sir, your mina has earned five more. What, what I think, it, it's really neat when you look at those guys giving credit where credit is due. Notice how they say, they both say, your mina did this. Your mina produced this fruit. It's the same with us in our mina, with God's word and sacrament. We don't save every, anyone from their sins. We're not the ones who convince or convert anyone. We're not the ones who wash those sins away. <coughs> it's the Holy Spirit working through God's word and sacraments. It's the Holy Spirit who's doing all of it. He gets all the credit. He gets all the glory. He gets all the praise. <coughs> Sadly, though, there was that other servant that came forward too, right? That other servant who came and said, Sir, here is your mina. I have kept it laid away in a piece of cloth. I was afraid of you because you are a hard man. You take out what you did not put in and reap what you did not sow. This guy, instead of using that, that handkerchief to wipe the sweat off of his brow from working that mina, he took that, that amazing gift that God had given to him, he wrapped it up, and he, he hid it away. He tried to come up with excuses, tried to justify his lazy and wicked behavior. I, it, well, it's not my fault. What, what am I going to get out of it? Sir, you're going to take what's yours anyway. You're not going to treat me fairly. Why should I put all my labor, all my effort into something that you're going to get all the glory, you're going to get all the praise, you're going to get all the profit? But really, when you think about it, whose mina was it in the first place? It's the king's. Who's in charge? Who's the boss? King. That servant didn't have any ground to stand upon. Sadly, sometimes our hearts cry out and complain and grumble like this third servant that we see before us today. Asking, what's in it for me, God? How often does that happen in your week where you take the mina of God's word and sacrament and you, you wrap it up in a handkerchief and you, you leave it in the closet. How, how, many times, how many times in a week does your Bible go uncracked because, well, I have better things to do with my time? Have you ever been tempted to skip a Bible class because, well, I know that stuff already. What's the point? Have you been tempted to... to to rob God and chintz on your offerings because, well, I'm not seeing any return on my investment that I'm giving into it. Have you, your eyes of faith looked up to heaven and say, God, what's in this for me? Why should I go through the, the pain? Why should I carry this cross? Why should I put in the time? Why should I make sacrifices? Why should I give up the money that I earned out of my wallet for the sake of your gospel when you're the one who's going to get all the glory you're the one who's going to get all the praise. What am I going to get out of it? When we cry out like that, we grumble and complain. We, we show what's really living and breathing inside of ourselves. It's that wicked, lazy servant. It's that, that old Adam, that original sin that's been with us since the time we were conceived. But what, does, what did the king say to that servant who responded in such a way? I will judge you by your own words, you wicked servant. You knew, did you, that I am a hard man, taking out what I did not put in and reaping what I did not sow? Why then didn't you put my money on deposit so that when I came back, I could have collected it with interest? Then he said to those standing by, take his mina away from him and give it to the one who has ten minas. Sir, they said, he already has ten. He replied, I tell you that to everyone who has, more will be given. But as for the one who has nothing, even what they have will be taken away. 
but those enemies of mine who did not want me to be king over them, bring them here and kill them in front of me. Jesus the king will come to judge on that last day. And he judges all who loathe and despise his word and sacraments. He banishes them to hell forever. But we also see another side of our king. We see a side that is merciful and loving. We see a king who, though he's holy and righteous, perfect and blameless in every way, humbled himself and became the servant of the world. Jesus, who being in very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Jesus saved us from the very actions and words, uh, from the, the, the very punishment that our actions and words warranted. Jesus came for the sins of the world. And when Jesus did that, when he, he left his throne in heaven and masked his glory with flesh, he didn't ask, what's in it for me? When, when Jesus walked from town to town to village to village and was, was spat upon and had his reputation ruined and trampled, Jesus didn't ask, what's in it for me? When Jesus was walking along that road from Jericho to Jerusalem to go into the lion's den, into certain death, he wasn't asking, what's in it for me? And when he hung there on that cross, and when he suffered the pains of hell, the full wrath and just punishment from God, Jesus didn't ask, what's in this for me? He was thinking of us. He was thinking of you. He said, he pleaded, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. From the creation of time, from before you were born, Christ had his heart set on having you to love you. And there was no punishment that would be too harsh. No, no path, no road too difficult that he wouldn't go, for, go through it for you. All this he did, not asking you to, to pull your weight, not asking you to, to do your fair share, all simply to love you. He did it all his own. And if that weren't enough, he says to us, his blood-bought servants, here, take these minas, take my minas, take my means of grace, take my word and sacraments, and put them to use in your life. Here, take these holy waters of baptism and wash away the stains of your children's sins forever. Clothe them with my righteousness for all time. Here, here, Take my body and my blood. Proclaim with one another my death until I come back again. Here, do this in remembrance of me. Do this for the forgiveness of sins. Here. Here. Take my word, my trustworthy word, which will not let you down, which will never lie to you, which will never fail you, which will guide you through this world of darkness. It will keep you away from all harm and danger. Here. We don't know when Christ is coming back, but we know what to do while we wait for him to return. We take these precious gifts, we take his minas, and we put them to work in our lives. We pour our heart and soul into this precious and wonderful ministry. Because it's through those tools, through those means of grace through which God works and creates faith. This is our ministry. 
This is our, our life of thanks, not obligation. As the hymnist once wrote, Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and let me sing always, only for my king. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from thee. <coughs> Take my silver and my gold, not a mite would I withhold. Take my intellect and use every power as thou shalt choose. Take my will and make it thine, it shall be no longer mine. Take my heart, it is thine own, it shall be thy royal throne. Take my love, my Lord, I pour at thy feet its treasure store. Take myself. And I will be ever only all for thee. Let's put those minas to work. Work that's well worth the effort. To God be the glory, now and forever. Amen. Please stand. May the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We join in confessing our faith according to the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 12 in our service board. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, our ushers will be handing out our friendship registers. We ask that you please fill those out to mark your visit here with us. Those of you who are worshiping with us online, please be sure to sign our online guest book. After that, we have the opportunity to bring our offerings of thanks to the Lord.
Please stand for the prayer of the church. The prayer of the church is found on page 13 in our service folder. And in our prayers today, we'll be praying, uh, continuing to pray for Florence McMahon, uh, uh, the mother of one of Jim Luck's co-workers. Florence is still recovering from a, a car accident that she was recently involved in. Uh, she made it through some successful surgeries, uh, but still has a long road of recovery ahead of her. We'll also be offering a prayer of thanks uh, for uh, Roy and Pat Stolpa, who will be celebrating their 36th wedding anniversary this upcoming Tuesday. So uh, we take these and all our other requests to the Lord in prayer. Out of the depths we cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear our voices. Let your ears be attentive to our cries for mercy. Heavenly Father, we confess with sorrow that we have sinned and deserve only your anger and punishment. If you kept a record of our sins, we would surely be lost. We confess with joy that your unfailing love has redeemed us. Our hope is in you and in your full redemption. Around us we see the birth pangs of the last days, war, famine, earthquakes, false prophets, spiritual apathy. Use these signs to remind us that we do not know the day or hour when Christ will come again. Keep us faithful to your word. Send your spirit to strengthen our faith so that we are always prepared for your son's return as judge. Make us faithful in sharing your word and cause many more to put their hope in you before the end comes. Build our fellowship of love as brothers and sisters in faith. Help us support one another when trials and troubles come our way. Heavenly Father, Holy Physician, we ask that you continue to be with Florence McMahon as she continues on her road to recovery. We thank you for lending her a successful surgery. Uh, we thank you for allowing the doctors and nurses who are caring for her to uh, use the gifts that you've given them to the best of their abilities. We ask that you would continue to hold before Florence's eyes the, the, the news of her forgiveness in Christ, uh, that, that you, she, you certainly have the power to heal all physical pain because you've healed all spiritual pain through the blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus. Lord of the Church, we, we praise and thank you for the 36 years with which you have blessed Roy and Pat Stolpa in holy matrimony. We ask that you would continue to allow Roy and Pat to grow in the means of grace and grow together in their love for one another. Allow them to continue to serve one another uh, and share with one another the message of your love and forgiveness. Let that always be the center of their marriage now and always. Hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. for Jesus to come again and make all things new. May he find us, whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life, faithfully enduring to the end through the power of your Holy Spirit. Come, Lord Jesus, may your grace be with us. Amen. We join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our God generously comes to us with forgiveness in very tangible means as we participate in Holy Communion. Because the Bible has convinced us that Jesus' body and blood are present in the Lord's Supper and that receiving this sacrament together is a public statement of complete oneness in our beliefs. We now invite to the Lord's Supper members of this congregation and other wells and ELS churches. Our congregation doesn't want to be presumptuous and put you in the position of stating your agreement with our convictions before we've had the opportunity to explain them. 
May the Lord be with you all. May the Lord be with you too. Hearts and hands and voices raise, lifted to the Lord in praise. Thank you, Lord, our God most good, for our souls most precious. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love, he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. He protects and preserves his church in every age and gives us confidence to lift up our heads and to watch for Jesus with joy. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of your glory. You are my God and I will exalt you. I will give you thanks for you have become my salvation. on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. and come forward at the direction of our ushers. <laughs> Take and eat. This is the true body of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given in death for the forgiveness of all your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed on the cross for the forgiveness of all your sins. Go knowing your sins are forgiven. Depart in peace. Amen.
says. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given and shed on the cross for the remission of all of your sins. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and keep you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. for the remission.
heart in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Join me in the song of thanks found on page 18 in our worship folder. Please stand. Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen, amen, amen. You may be seated for our closing hymn. 